So it looks like we have a theme going on. And the theme basically is non-traditional architectures speeding up our favorite framework, Spark. So what we're going to talk about here is something that's old, that's new again. It's called a SIA course. So from this morning's keynote, you might have noticed we have a problem with compute. Uh, if you have a compute-bound problem, you're pretty much out of luck. You have to toss hardware at the problem. Um, there's acceleration strategies. You can go GPU, you can go FPGA, you can go mini-core, uh, you can go ASIC. Uh, I'd like to toss something else uh, in the hat, basically, a SIA course. So, what's wrong with this picture, right? Growth of data is exponential. We all know that. Uh, thanks to the investment in the R&D on the silicon side, the growth of transistors is exponential. However, and you've probably seen these slides before, old Intel slide, uh, something really bad happened to us in the early 2000s. Frequency scaling stopped and we started throwing cores at the problem. The cores started getting bigger and bigger, but our performance did not increase. So for the last couple years, uh, since the early 2000s, our performance on the CPU side has been increasing in a linear fashion. Uh, exponential data, exponential transistors, linear performance growth. So one of these pictures is not like the other. So, let's make another observation. The Pentium processors, these big monster processors, and you'll see what I mean here in a couple of slides, uh, were developed on a workload that is entirely different than what we're processing in Spark. Uh, they're designed to run 100 million lines of code, quarter of a billion lines of code. Uh, they have primary caches, secondary caches, tertiary caches, four-level caches, um, millions, hundreds of millions of transistors designed to eck out and speed up the cache problem. However, our workloads are different. We're not running 100 million lines of code. We're not running a million lines of code. Um, we're probably running code bases on the size of thousands of lines of code. So there's been a fundamental change in the scale of the workloads that we're processing. So what happens if we change the architecture to match the workloads? So rather than tossing 200 million transistors at the problem, and you get one processor, and you know, on a very expensive Intel die, you can get 32 or 34 of those, uh, why don't we put a sea of cores where the cores are in the hundreds of thousands of K transistors? So a thousand X difference, which means we can put a heck of a lot more small processors on a die than a bunch of big processors. So a picture pulled off the web, basically, uh, and this is comparing different sizes of processors, same technology nodes, more or less. And if you take a look at a small ARM A7, you can see that you can put basically 50 plus of them in the space of a big Haswell. And this is old stuff. The ratios are still, they get better. Um, so putting lots of little processor cores is kind of fun. We've been doing that for 10, 15 years. Uh, but how do you interconnect them? How do you feed these things? How do you schedule them? That's where the magic is at. But assuming we can solve that problem, uh, we have an architecture of lots and lots of little cores. Uh, but the other problem um, that has been resolved is the workloads. So when we tried this 10, a decade ago, we didn't have the workloads. Nowadays, we have big data workloads that are fine grain in by definition, and they're paralyzed for us. So Spark does a wonderful job of optimizing the workloads so we can feed it into a SIA course. Now, there is also one other item that you have to, we have to do as an industry. We know from decades of experience that software always trumps specialized hardware machines. So commodity servers typically run rings around specialized machines other than specialized niches. So what we really want to do is take Spark code, hit a carriage return, and make it run faster. And oh, I made a mistake. I changed my Scala code, hit a carriage return, and make it run faster. And that's the trick. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch over, and I'm, we're going to run a demo. And I'm going to start the demo. It takes a couple of minutes to run. You'll see it running, flying, uh, the googly goop flying around in the background. And then we will measure the performance. And I'll explain after I start uh, what it's actually doing. 
So if the uh, gods of the internet are happy, and we're up. Okay. So we'll let that run in the background. I'll explain what's happening. Okay. So this is the model we're proposing. Uh, basically a server. And I'm starting on the bottom working my way up. The server, we're going to stuff a thousand little cores in the server. Okay. And that's a, vi a visual recommend rep yeah, representation of the cores. We call it a true stream fabric. Uh, gazillion cores. The user on the left-hand side basically types in his code, uh, Scala or Java, lets the optimizers inside a Spark do their job, and at the end of the day, it spits out a graph. Uh, most big data problems, including machine learning, can be ultimately boiled down to a graph problem. We then take this graph that we call a topology or a DAG uh, in Spark parlance, and we start stuffing it across a thousand cores until we run out of processor cores, and then we run it. So the benchmark. So we're going to run a benchmark that's a couple years old. It's called the Yahoo Streaming Benchmark, and we're currently running it in our cloud on a 1U server, so slightly under two inches tall, 16-core uh, Xeons. And then we're going to run it on a 1U server with 1,000 processor cores in it and compare the uh, performance. So what are we running? OK, so the Yahoo Streaming Benchmark was created by Yahoo a couple years ago because they needed an application-based benchmark. Rather than the micro benchmarks we typically run on these things, they wanted an application. And the application basically, uh, it measures the number of ads being served. And the metric is number of ads per second per server. Um, and we'll run it, and we'll run it on a sea of core fabric and see what the performance difference is. Uh, you might wonder why is this is important other than just bugging you on your mobile device. Uh, Facebook, two quarters ago, made $5.4 billion on mobile ads. I think it was $5.7 billion last quarter. Uh, and if you listened on into the conference call, they said basically we're going to have to do more processing to get you better ads so we all click through more often. So the compute needs are going up, uh, real-time streaming data problem perfectly suited for Spark. So let's see what happened. Okay, it completed. Okay, so now I'm running, and it completed the same processing task on 1,000 cores. We're a little bit faster than the traditional Intel architecture. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to run this in real time so you can actually see what happened, because humans don't deal with a factor of 10 very well. Uh, we're just not wired up that way. So. What we're going to do is we're going to run uh, the benchmark around a million ads. We're going to run a quarter of a million of the ads. So the green uh, barrels basically represent a quarter of a million ads. You'll see them drain as fast as we can uh, process them. Uh, on the left, 16 processors, and there's color coded. So black means the processors are not doing anything. Red means it's wasting its time in the operating system someplace. Green meaning it's actually performing something useful. And on the right-hand side, if you can see that, there's a 1,000 small processor cores, SIA cores. So we're going to run both simultaneously in real time, and we, the metric here is number of ads per second. Pay attention to the one on the right. And we're done. So in this run, it ran about 2.6, call it 2.7 million ads per second per one use server. And the Intel processor is doing what a bunch of big Intel processor cores do. They're vi usually this is like the longest 30 seconds of my life. At the end, we'll compare the difference. Okay, so it ran at 7,400 ads per second. So on this particular run, the sea of cores, 
beat up a Intel machine by a factor of 400, which pretty much tells you that the workloads that spark, at least in this particular benchmark, are very well suited for a sea of small cores. Okay. Uh, so what is this thing? Remember I said it's a SIA cores, small cores, but the magic is how to hook these things up together. So it's a non-traditional uh, architecture, biologically inspired interconnect. Uh, small cores are basically risk processors. Um, we're getting consistently a 40x or better speed up on the Spark workloads. Uh, and what you just show, saw is the fastest published uh, benchmark on the Yahoo Streaming benchmark. And the important point is we did not touch the code that Yahoo wrote. It just took the Spark code and ingested it. And so if you want to change your Spark code, you change your Spark code, hit a carriage return, and it automatically, automatically speeds up. So what does that mean? It means basically that the growth of data, which is exponential, uh, which is matched by an exponential growth of transistors. Uh, by jiggering the architecture, we can change what used to be linear to back to an exponential growth rate. So as we stuff more transistors on die, we stuff more processors on die. And under this scenario, under Spark, we can use every little processor we can add. That's it.